So this year's Google I.O. was like probably the most important Google I.O. that's ever happened. They made so many huge announcements. There was there was, you know, some some big launches of uh, of new devices and and, you know, I've just I've never seen anything quite quite as big as this before. And not only from that consumer angle, but even from the developer angle, there's never been a time when we have had such an overhaul of developer APIs, not only for phones, but for wearables, for, for TV things. New design paradigms this is for absurd. Android. It's, it's this, amazing. This is, this is crazy. Do you, do you, have you ever seen this before? Uh, well, since we didn't really see anything big actually announced, uh, I say no. No, turns out. Yeah. This is a Nexus special, episode 37, Google I.O. 2015, on May 28th, 2015. And now, with more straps and apps. This episode of the Nexus special is hosted by Ryan Rampersad and Ian Buck. That was actually what we hoped. One of the, especially the second half of the keynote was probably the most boring that I've ever seen from a tech keynote. Now, do you think that has something to do with us, or is it actually was it actually boring? Um, I don't know. I mean, we were riffing on on it the whole time. Well, that's my job. And uh, it well, but I mean, it, it was a you know. We distracted each other a little bit from what was actually being said on the screen. So, once... well, you know who wasn't distracting us? All of our Periscope listeners. Yeah, <laughs> yeah since Periscope just uh, launched on Android, we were we were trying out broadcasting ourselves, watching a broadcast of the <laughs> keynote, uh, and you know our our clever reactions and the great opinions that we have they about weren't everything. that clever um yeah no it, and that's probably why we had ab- exactly zero viewers we after like one. the first five minutes yeah the the one viewer that we had for most of the stream was your phone that was sitting off to the side we were monitoring the progress of the feed mm-hmm. right yeah making sure that it was up oh. and we had good audio and so you know it's a bad sign when we have more to talk about of a periscope an app that twitter made <laughs> than the entire conference keynote from google Hmm. I'd say it was pretty good timing on Periscope's part, oh, their I, launch. I think, because I think the, they did it on purpose. Yeah, that way. they came out the day before Google I.O. So, so they had a day had, for bug fixes, and then they could go for I.O. And and you have, of course, you know the Android Periscope enthusiasts who are, <laughs> who are going to Google I.O. and have an opportunity, mm-hmm. a, a really cool, exciting thing to actually broadcast right away. Oh, yeah. 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 Good, maybe good well thought out but we can talk about periscope later probably on an episode of the extra dimension oh we'll go into depth plugs, there. man yeah mm. okay so let's talk about what they actually did talk about um so they talked about their new version of android yep they always for the last quite a few years they've been talking about the new versions of android uh, at each google io mm-hmm. so, so bad news first ba- uh what do you mean bad it's news not first? out now no or in the foreseeable future probably fall yeah. Yeah. It'll it'll most I mean I'm guessing that it'll be launching with a whatever phone. their next phone slash tablet combo Thing. is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh they say that there's a developer preview available now Sometime, today. Yeah. Some yeah, you know, some near future. Right. Um we don't know of course what it's called. It's, it's Android M. M now. Yep. And it, what do you what do you want it to be called? Any preferences? What kinds of uh, desserts do you we know, have? Every, everybody M? says marshmallow, but oh, that would make sense. It, but it, isn't that copyrighted? They have to get permission. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I, I've like there's the Stay Puffed marshmallows. Okay. That's that, that's a brand, but I don't, I don't think that marshmallow itself is. Brand. Okay. And it's not like they've never had a copyrighted brand before. Oh no, mm-hmm. Mr. Kit Kat. <laughs> yeah. That was supposed to be key lime pie, right? That's what everybody thought it was going to be. Yes, I believe so. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, I also wonder about the developer preview. So last summer, I put the developer preview on my Nexus 7 that I bought specifically for the developer preview because I didn't want to brick my Nexus 5. Yeah, you nerd. Eh, and so I did that, and it was awful. Um, what an awful developer preview. But, I mean, that's what it, previews are supposed to be. They're supposed to be full of bugs that you can report. And, mm-hmm. you know, so problem is, unlike Apple's developer previews, where you get multiple images throughout the course of development up to Golden Master and release. Oh, yeah. Nothing. Complete radio silence on Google's part. Huh. So we'll see if that changes in this release cycle. Maybe we'll get another milestone somewhere down the line. So was the awfulness 
that you remember mostly due to actual bugs or was it just like missing features and poorly designed UI stuff? Um, so there were bugs. Um, some apps didn't work. Okay. Um, you know, this was when they were fixing their art runtime. Yeah. Time. Yeah. So th- that was probably where most of the bugs came in. Um, but mostly for me in using the device with all of the new, you know, look and feel API stuff, mm-hmm. you know, material, um, it was a lack of fully materialized stuff. Yeah. Also, the biggest one was, of course, the dismiss all notifications button, which how do you forget is supposed to be there? Yeah, because that, that was in previous versions of Android and right. everything. Yeah. But they took it out because they forgot about it. Or something. Who knows? But it was but back it, in the real one. Yep. But just in the preview, it was broken. Yeah. So let's go over some of the features that are actually in M. Yeah. So the first one, and I'd say this is probably one of the most important ones, is they have been talking about a new app permission system. So if you have ever used uh, an Android device, you're probably familiar with installing uh, an app and then seeing this big list of stuff that this app is going to have. Yeah, like it's going to have access to your contacts or your location or your camera or whatever. And so instead of asking for those permissions up front, they will uh, allow so that the app will only ask for permission for something the first time it actually needs that. Thing. So, so for example, I just pulled up Farmville Harvest Sweep. Okay. And in-app purchases, identity, photos, media, and files, Wi-Fi connection information, and device ID and call information are the permissions it requires. Why does it need to know about my call information? What is it doing with calls? It's a game. Yeah, I know, I remember a lot of people asking, like, for example, I just got this, uh, you know, free like flashlight app or whatever. Uh, why does it need to know stuff about my location or my Wi-Fi connections right. or something? And, and uh, the answer to that apparently is usually so they can show you ads. And target so those dumb. ads a little bit or something? You know, so in my opinion then, if it's something from the platform itself should have some kind of ad thing so that mm-hmm. the developer doesn't well, get... Well, it's coming later the, in the in, I know, in but our like, show notes. So like, <laughs> instead of re- having the app require permissions for the ads, you should just make the device ask for permissions to show ads in apps. And mm-hmm. if you say no, no ads, haha. Deny and, everyone. And no then you ad- don't ever get to uh, download an app, app that yep. uh, requires mm-hmm. ads? Yep, okay. perfect. That's funny. Yeah. What else does it do? So they also have shrunk the list of permissions that uh, that that you'll have to worry about. So we won't be seeing things like uh, it won't be as granular. Yeah, they're I, they're broad categories of, of functionality. Mm-hmm. They they let's see, there were eight of them, I believe. Eight so, on screen. There could be a few more. Yeah, but yeah. So they they have categories such as sensors and the camera is one of them, I believe. Location, mm-hmm. uh, microphone. So a, a most of the stuff that they that they were talking about is hardware stuff that the app will be able to access. And uh you know for whatever reason you might not want an app to access that sort of thing. So you you can usually like as long as it's not something that the the core of the app absolutely needs to run, you should be able to just say no, I don't want you to do that and right. then you don't get whatever whatever extra functionality comes from that. And then the developer can sense that you've denied it and tell you that yep. you should totally do this because it's awesome. Um so the the list of of permissions um that you've given to a particular app, you can see from inside uh is it from inside that app settings, or was that from um, the settings I, app, and then you look I at that app? I think it might app. be in the settings app. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then you, yeah, you probably go into the list of apps and click on that, you know, app. a particular app, yeah. and it'll tell you what things you've given it permission to. Mm-hmm. You can also go and look in, uh, probably in the settings app as well, look at all of the different permissions, and for example, see what uh, apps you've given permission to uh, access the camera, or whatever. So, hey, uh, did you hear about that thing I was talking about previews and uh, we wanted more copies of the images? Yes. Well, it looks like they might do that. Um, Preview 1, initial release late May, that's now. Preview 2, late June, early July. And Preview 3, final in July. Okay. So maybe they are going to do it. And so the so the final version of the preview is coming out in late July, which kind of points to maybe late September? August by yeah August September by yeah. for the final Potentially. version of huh. M. Cool. Well then, 
I will have to read this more closely later. So, but there might be hope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they, there have been a few Android. Uh, so back to the app permissions thing. Um, there have been like a, a few uh, Android developers that I've seen complaining about the current permission system. <laughs> Chris Lacey. Uh-huh. And, you know, to talking about how like one of his app um, action launcher has to have a, a lot of permissions that sound really, really sinister and kind of serious. And but but like, you know, he only needs those for like one thing. Mm-hmm. And so if a user never uses that feature, he doesn't want to have to ask for that for permission to, to do Up that. Front. Yeah, right. Now, on the other, on the other hand, I wonder how many regular users you know, who are downloading Candy Crush have even thought of looking at what that permission screen actually yeah. says. Like, even if it says Wi-Fi connection info, I have asked my mom, hey, is your Wi-Fi on? And she's like, I don't know how to set that. So I don't know if normal people actually have a clue. Right. Yeah, I, I hardly ever read those lists myself. Well, we don't care. We can handle yeah. it. If Yeah, if if I've heard about an app and I know that it's, like, legit, right. I'll... I'll uh, accept whatever permissions and they're you, asking me for. If you later find out that it is nefarious, you know how to change your passwords and you know mm. how to delete the app. That's a lot of effort. I know, but you can handle it, yeah. and most people can't. So there are some other features in the in the Android M. So they're enhancing the web experience. Very exciting web experience. Very. So in-app web views are getting an update, and so they're going to be using Chrome, so they're not using the android browser web view anymore it's the chrome view now so that's good ah, so it's yeah. the right engine and in addition to that I, I don't know how exactly how it works but it appears that you're going to have some kind of tab like system so when you open a link inside of a web view it will not necessarily asynchronously load but it will load a tab or an overlay on top of where you previously were yeah it didn't i mean it didn't seem like a, a tab tab kind but they're of calling thing. it a tab yeah which is wrong but it, it it basically looked like it worked the way that uh you know the facebook app and the right. twitter app enjoy automatically opening links mm-hmm. for you inside their own app right so that you don't, don't switch to chrome or anything right. like that so it, it is nice that they're letting you do some kind of overlay so that you can actually use a browser this way you'd expect mm-hmm. although it isn't full yeah. And one of the one of the features that they talked about in there was that it could like kind of preload the links that that mm-hmm. you see on the page uh in you know that that the app is displaying to you so that it doesn't have to load a page when you click on it. Mm-hmm. So it it's basically It could be asynchronous, but it's not necessarily. Yeah. Because you could only load one at a time anyway. No, I guess could you, you could you probably I guess can... you could preload a few. Yeah. Still though. It's not as good as what we have. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, what we have is nice because Heck. it's like it's after after you've clicked on it, then it loads, but you can continue right. to do stuff in the original place where you were mm-hmm. uh, until it's finished. Mm-hmm. So I kind of I kind of actually prefer the idea of having stuff preloaded before I click on it because I don't have if, to care about my data cap. But what if you? Well, yeah, you do. I mean, some okay, you don't, but I guess some people do. Yeah. Um. But I was thinking, well, what if you were in your feed reader? You wouldn't want to load every single no, one. No, that's true. So that would I be useless. What about Twitter? You don't want to load every single tweet link. In a world where I have unlimited data, I don't care. Yeah, but I don't feel like that's a good use of your device's performance. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of a brute force uh, approach to getting but context, the user... But man! The, yeah, getting, getting the user convenience shouldn't take that much effort. You know, if you're on the Skrillex Twitter page... Yeah. And you open a link to the Skrillex SoundCloud. Should you preload it? Well, it'll be a, an alien either way. True. Uh, so they're also doing this um, enhancement to how app links work. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of hard to describe how exactly it will work. But basically, there's this thing that you can add to your APK. And it will tell the system what links should be owned by an app so that you don't have to go through the selector Mm -hmm. and that's cool also example they used was opening a twitter link instead of going to chrome or twitter you would just know to go to twitter yep but i had a question what happens for third-party links can third parties claim ownership over links or will first-party apps always win out 
Yeah. And I would feel bad if third parties couldn't do it because I have, what is it called, Phoenix? Phoenix. Um, and I would prefer that to win over the Twitter app. Yep. Mm-hmm. Do you even have the Twitter app installed? Not anymore, but I used to run both just for fun. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think if if uh, if it's at all possible for the Phoenix app to claim Twitter links, then I think you would be able to choose between them if you had both of them installed. So what does this really solve? But like, isn't this the functionality that choosing the default is isn't that what that's for yeah and so it's yeah so the first time that that you click on a twitter link and that you know and you have the twitter app installed android would ask you what app you wanted to use to handle mm-hmm. that link and then from then on you, you would, would just use you would, that by yeah. default uh so it's it's just taking away that one time kind Step. of yeah is it really worth all this extra trouble it looks like whatever they had to do was really complicated well, when they showed the code on on screen, it was like five lines. Yeah, but there was a SHA one involved. All this insanity, like that sounds complicated. Yeah, I yeah, I don't think that that was a huge problem to well, to fix. Maybe not for you. For no. Somebody, it's going to be awful. No, I mean like like it, the the issue of having people choose which yeah. app to to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think that that was a huge problem, and and in fact, I kind of like having control over. You know, which apps. I wonder about a lot of normal people though. Yeah. Normal people, they don't like choices. No. And if you confront them, like Chrome or Twitter, and they'll probably have already forgotten what link they clicked on, and they'll probably click one of them, and it'll be random. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It might be... It might, I, yeah, I mean, people might just uh, default to Chrome because they recognize it as Chrome, and like that's where you go to Twitter on your computer, so oh, why man, not on your what, phone? What a terrible line of thinking. I. People that's are, exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go to so, Android... And something android pay pay so yeah this seems to be a a an evolution of google wallet i i'm not convinced that the brand name google wallet needed to be replaced by something based on android why do you think it was changed to android so i think I think that it's because they're trying to put an emphasis on the ability to pay at stores with your phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so basing it because like when I think of, when, when you hear Google Wallet, you're just like, OK, I know that this is a Google service, but I it it being a wallet doesn't really tell me anything um, with Android pay. It's like Android. That's the device pay that's the action that I'm doing. I'm paying Makes for more things sense. with Android. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, like I I had been reading that they were going to put this on iOS as well because you know, like their their goal is to put, have as many of their major services right. on Android and iOS mm-hmm. as possible. And since since a big part of Google Wallet is uh being able to send money to other people uh who also use Google Wallet, uh-huh. like you they definitely want to have but isn't that it funny? service on as many different platforms as possible. Isn't it funny to call it Android Pay then if it's also on exactly. iOS? Exactly. Yeah, that's why I think it's a strange a strange name. So it should have just been Google Pay then? Maybe. Because that would have matched up with Apple Pay. That's true. Linearly. Yeah. But that why wouldn't that be better? It's not iPhone Pay. It's Apple Pay. Like I said, I was happy with the Google Wallet name. Yeah, wallets yeah. are weird. So... They so they talk uh they talked about how they're supporting other banking apps so um multiple yeah I I it, it'll just be like an API that other apps will hook yeah. into right. um to to get access to your to your payment right. options so you can have your you know Wells Fargo app pay for you yep through Android Pay which I, wait, now that I think about it, that's very strange. Because yeah, no. if you have a Wells Fargo app, chances are you have a Wells Fargo bank account, and your Wells Fargo bank account is probably where Google or Android Pay is getting your money from. Right. So now your money is going to Google to the Wells Fargo. But I don't know app, if that's how they're going to actually do it. To... I think um, when um, they did the little demoy thing, they said, "So you 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 authenticate with your fingerprint. We'll get there later. But anyway, so you do that. You authenticate, uh-huh. and then you NFC it, and then." Uh-huh. The credit card number is never given to the merchant, but it's authenticated and authorized through Google. Right. But I don't think the money ever goes to Google. Mm, right. Well, wouldn't it have to if they weren't giving if if they weren't giving? I the don't think vendor, the money ever goes through Apple either. But if the if the 
if the app is never giving the vendor my credit card information, how does my money Magic. get from my credit card to the vendor? Magic. It would like Google would have to make a withdrawal and then give Magic. it to the vendor, right? I don't know. Apple doesn't seem to have a trouble with it. I don't. I don't know. Um, it also supports other major credit card carriers, so Visa mm-hmm. and yep. the others. Very important to get Visa on the bank there. Bank. Yeah, was it was only discovered before. But I so when I set up Google Wallet, my Visa debit card has been right. But you in can't there. use it, a real credit card. Yeah, hmm. it's right here oh. in my wallet. Weird. I don't know. I, I've, the, their partner was only Discover for a while, and I always assumed that's all that you could do. I don't know. Mm. And all of the major cell phone networks are somehow involved in this. What? Are, what, what I part, don't know what why part, the networks need to be a part of this. I don't know. Does it matter? Like, can you? I don't understand. Well, who cares? Everybody except Sprint. Yeah, but I don't know. Like, why? Sprint isn't going to be preventing you from being able to pay for things with Android Pay, are they? No, they're not Verizon. Yeah. There's, <laughs> this is yeah i don't know what that's about i think we were i think we were joking around a lot during that section we were bored out of our minds <laughs> okay let's go to even the, the even finger though, painting section like, yeah okay yeah uh so yeah we've got fingerprint scanning um supported on all like the so it's an api and you yeah. can implement it if your phone has it yeah but guess as, what phone doesn't have it most of them yeah all of them except for like samsung S6. and do you really think that samsung is going to take the new APIs? the new system yeah the new apis well okay so the s6 won't get the update for sure we know how cuz samsung works. sucks no cuz android sucks and then for for second of all i think they probably will eventually implement it because there's no reason not to instead mm-hmm. of having to maintain your own branch why not just let google do it as we know, though, Samsung loves maintaining their own versions of things because they have, you know, their own internet browser. They have their own music. They have their own player, app store. They have, oh yeah, they do. The Samsung store. Oh goodness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have I mentioned that I hate Samsung? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So I think on in the demo that we were watching, the guy could, you know, use his fingerprint and swiper to authenticate. But it looked like on the screen you could also just use your regular slide to unlock pattern. Yes. So both were valid options, and that's good because you shouldn't be prevented from quick authentication just because you don't have fingerprint tech. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that the only context that they showed this being used in, besides like unlocking the screen, is was for Android Pay authentication. Right. Exactly. That. Yeah. Although I wonder. Well, I guess you can use Android Pay locally on the device, like if you wanted to pay for an Android app through the Play Store. Yeah, probably you might might be able to just authenticate your own Android account or Google account with the swipe finger swipe. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So power and charging, of course, they talk about how they they're getting much much better uh, battery life than than they ever have before in this version of Android. And the the one big thing that they talked about was Doze. So what a funny word. Yeah. To pick. So. They're using, uh, you know, the gyroscopes and the accelerometer to to uh, detect if a device has just been, like, sitting on a table for a really long time. Idle. And, yeah, so if it's been sitting, if it's been sitting idle, then they will, quote, exponentially back off the sync activities of that device. So they're improving standby time for devices that you don't use very often by a lot. But that's like, those are the kinds of devices that I'm worrying the least about their battery life. So, like, I take my phone out of my pocket to check the time maybe twice an hour at least. Sure. And, you know, I guess if I had an Android Wear watch, I would just check that all the time. But Mm -hmm. So, that means my phone will never have more than 30 minutes of exponential back-off-ness. Yeah. And, And And I don't think that 30 minutes is long enough for... For them to even like start doing a doze, type it might of thing. be maybe it's just ten minutes off screen time. I'm sure they'll tinker with it over the course of their testing here. But you also think about like for most of that day, it's in your pocket, so it knows that it's not sitting on a table, so it's not going to doze itself. I wonder if that matters. Like maybe just the table part was just uh, an explanation for that example. But if it's idle, I would just say that's screen use. Not mm, not screen. No, because they they were talking about detecting movement t- and okay. stuff. Yeah, that's too bad. Um, so what everybody wants and but, everybody does with Tasker uh-huh. is they 
just check if the phone screen isn't on for five minutes, turn off sync for 10 minutes. And if it's, uh, then turn it back on for five minutes and then turn it back off. Repeat. So many people do the same thing with Tasker and it saves so much battery life. There's no reason Google couldn't do it. But that won't, that doesn't that mean that those people aren't getting notifications right when they for come For 10 them? minutes. Yeah? Yeah. It's a long time. Battery life. But I need to be able to get back to people who message me you right don't. away. You don't need I it. really do. Nope. People get mad. They don't. You, they can get mad for ten minutes, and you'll make them happy. I don't. I don't. I don't think. That's I don't know. Anyway, so now let's get. Let's go to the other side of uh, the power power spectrum. Charging, where it's reversible. Yeah. So they talked about USB Type C, and they were all you know touting its its futureness. Android and, M supports Type C, and yep. it's like yeah, because your hardware vendors haven't implemented it yet. Get mm-hmm. going. And they they showed a picture of you know a, a theoretical phone. device, yeah, mm-hmm. with a USB Type C charging port, and uh, so I'm betting I'm betting that the next Nexus is going to have a USB Type C. I would port. say so. Yeah, they also showed in that same section about Type C some new features Type C can do, such as charging another device through it. Yeah, because. Power can go either way through it. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting. You wouldn't think of a phone as being a host device, but no, maybe that's more usually. useful for your tablet. You know, Could your be. tablet can be your power bank. There, I mean, yeah, they also might be kind of worrying about other types of devices that might be running Android. Mm-hmm. You know, like if I have a um, an Android TV mm-hmm. kind of thing, and I want to charge something off of that. You, you know, USB well, Type C would be perfect for that. I got a good joke for you. Okay. You can plug it into the Chromecast because even though it's called the Chromecast, it actually runs a build of Android. Yes. Yeah. So dumb. Uh, there, there were also a few other things in that menu that they showed. Like I, I didn't I see it. Don't know what those were. The, like the bottom one said was something about My, MIDI. MIDI. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what that is. I, I always thought that MIDI was like music. a sound. Yeah. yeah. Programmable music. I don't know what that was in reference to. Me neither. If I look at the website, do you think it'll tell me? Nope, didn't tell me. Nope. Oh, well. So sad. Android Wear. So that was actually one of the big things from last year's Google I.O. And it was completely glossed over this year. Sort of. So they they were talking about how There are only seven models. Well, they, they, they were touting the number of models that they had. They were like, wow, we have like all these models. There are seven of them. And I realized right at that moment that like, yeah, actually up until now, I've thought... Man, there are so many Android Wear devices out there, but seven does not sound like very many at all. There isn't. There's, it's disappointing, really. Yeah. Uh, so they they were talking about some of the upcoming features that they're bringing to Android Wear. They talked about low power black and white screens, so that you know if you're if you're um, their example was you're grocery shopping and you want to have the list up on your wrist uh, and you don't want it to go away when like the the screen is going to sleep or something so you just have it black background white text and this is very similar similar to the active display from the moto x and nexus 6 mm-hmm. same kind of black and white screen yep yep uh they showed drawing emojis as for like in the in the messaging in the hangouts or something something yeah so in order to draw a picture and send it to somebody yeah in, instead of like trying to search through a list of emojis you would just draw the one that you want Wanted. and then it would find it for right. you right yeah which I, i'm not surprised that they have that because you know it, for Makes example in, in google docs they have uh when you're trying to find a special character mm-hmm. you can draw it and then right. it, it'll it'll it does a really really good job of finding the one that you want actually. you're teaching it you're you're telling it how to do it mhm mhm so the really really natural thing that they or the introduced supernatural supernatural <laughs> Wrist gestures. Oh my god! This what was is this the worst. even for? Oh, scrolling, right? Yeah. So they sh- they were talking about. I don't know if there are other gestures besides scrolling. That's oh, the only one that was natural. But they were talking about like flicking your wrist in order to scroll. So like if you wanted to scroll down, I believe you like flick your wrist towards you. Yeah. And then if you wanted to scroll up, you would flick your wrist away from yourself. Yeah. Uh, so just so unnatural. I can't wait to see people on Metro Transit like. Hitting people. Yeah, like <laughs> violently rotating their wrists to scroll I wasn't punching it. that guy. I was rotating my watch. <sighs> uh, but I understand why they're doing that because 
uh, a lot of people who have been reviewing smartwatches and stuff are complaining about the fact that this is a two-handed system. Right. Because you need one arm... To hold to, it. Yeah, to have it strapped to, and then you need your other hand to touch the screen with. And that is a great point. But is really this weird flicking motion good enough? Like, is that the best they could come up with? Like, I get it. There's so many situations where you need it. Like, your hands are dirty, you're outside, you have your gloves I'm in. carrying something, and, right. like, you know, I've got my grocery bag. But not. But hand. you can't flick your wrist when you're holding a bag. No, I'm holding my bag in my right arm, and I'm using my left arm to look at the thing. Okay. I'm not going to hold my grocery bag while in my left arm while trying to look at my you wrist can drop your eggs. with my left. <laughs> um, yeah, no, in, in, in like the 10 seconds that it's been since you asked the question, I can't think of anything better than, than flicking the wrist. But there's got to be but something better. There's got to be something, yeah. They also had a couple of uh, really funny phrases that i wrote down like android wear is about choice seven units and well they were also talking about all of their straps and apps because that rhymes yeah so i mean that is a really good point for them to to tout because right now uh what is it called apple watch yes that one the apple watch doesn't have custom watch faces only Mm, the faces mm -hmm. that ship with the watch are available and presumably that will open up after WWDC. Nobody, nobody needs more than that Mickey Mouse watch you, face, though. You really don't. I mean, that's if that was enough for Tim, that's enough for you. That should be how it works. But I think that's a really great thing for Android to focus on, for Google to focus on for Android Wear. Mm-hmm. But it's a shame that nobody, nobody knows what an Android Wear watch is. What an awful name, also, by the way. Yeah, and they, it, they also don't like when you when you have the watch and you have some apps that are built to run on the watch, they don't really advertise that no. fact. You don't know that you've installed an app that is going to take full advantage of the watch. Whereas with the Apple Watch, it's much, much more obvious yeah. when you've got something that's running on there. I wouldn't be surprised if there was an entire... Well, there must be one in both stores, an entire subsection for Android Wear mm. watch apps. A, a category or yeah. whatever to search through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Not impressed. Seven Seven watches... So, is it is it scoring a seven out of ten? No, it's, oh. not not the Verge. Um, I also want to mention that there was no giveaway of watches or phones or anything or really. Chromebooks, right? And hey, where were the Chromebooks this time? Sleeping, yeah. Uh, you know, in a uh, doze mode. The only Chromebook that I really saw was my the one that was in my lap. Oh, yeah. So since there was no giveaway, they didn't give away a watch. Now I wonder and speculate. Maybe nobody has one ready right now. Uh, if you recall, the um, Moto 360 has been going on pretty much fire sale prices mm-hmm. for the past month or so. Clearly, Motorola is getting ready for another release, so maybe that's just not ready yet, or they want their own separate events that's not really Google involved anymore. Yeah, the Moto 360 wasn't ready for last year's Google exactly. I/O either. They had, I think, they had two models that were ready yeah, by the time the, I/O the, came the, around. The, the S Watch or some, some Samsung yeah. something and LG's. First square one. Yeah. The Gwatch. So nobody has a product ready. It's hard for me to believe, but I feel like that's what they're telling me here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They also didn't talk about like what kinds of uh, improved hardware were going to be coming in future models of They kind of implied that with the low power black and white screens that they would all for sure be AMOLED because why tout that if they weren't forcing that? So that, that that is important. They also mentioned like we're supporting all these extra GPS and Wi-Fi features in our phones. Oh, yeah. Buy now, and um, I mean, didn't didn't Android Wear devices just get an update to enable Wi-Fi? Yeah, and I think there's only one. Is it the LG G Watch or Bane that has Wi-Fi? I thought the 360 also did. Did it? I don't remember. I don't. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Also, I have to yell at the 360 because it uses an OMAP TI chip. Which is, if you don't know, gone. TI left the chip market. They're gone. What does TI do anymore besides make ca- overpriced calculators? They make calculators, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Oh, I saw a... I don't know if it was an advertisement or something for a... Oh, it was on meh. Meh.com. I saw a calculator watch being sold. Oh, yeah? And I was just like, I need How much that. Was it? it was like $18 or oh, something like that. that's pretty reasonable. Yeah. And cheaper than a watch. Very. <laughs> and I could wear it around and just be like, all, the, all these people with these smartwatches, I'm going to be a hipster. Did I ever show the... you my 
uh, emulated calculator on the phone here? No. Okay, I'll show it to you. Just keep going in the stories and I'll... Uh, yeah, so basically I would just want it for like calculating tip at... Uh, at, at um, uh, what's it called? Restaurants and stuff. And this is nice. Yeah, so I found this app that's a fully emulated uh, TI-83, I think is what it is. It's pretty good. Like it's completely functional in every way. This is amazing yeah. because I re- I remember my um calculus professor teacher this was high school so it was a teacher um Mr. Yurenberg, he yep. had like an emulated one on For the computer. his Mac yeah yep. that so that he could that show awful. it up on the projector it was so slow why is this fast because it's on hardware why wasn't that what what how is this on hardware it's on a phone that doesn't suck yeah but the Macs at that school were really bad yeah they probably were i threes man. Core twos. I love that this is about the same yeah, size as the, the, <laughs> the TI eighty three as yep. well. Oh man, is this legal though? Well, like on a test, no. It's no, I legal. mean, I mean, like having having this thing that is, uh, you know, clearly like it's got you know, Texas Instruments I don't... brand. It's got the whole name. Okay, so it here's how here's how it works. Functionality. So, so they don't send you, they don't give you the file for the calculator. It's basically the TI emulator. Mm-hmm. Some program that this guy wrote, and then you have to download the you know the the zip file independently, and then just tell it to go and use it. So they're just coupling the legal and legal parts. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So Android Auto not talked about at all. Barely, very barely. They said that we're working on it. They yeah. So Android Auto was one of those things last year that I initially was like, uh. Eh? I don't know if this is going to be a good idea, but then I thought about it and I was like, this is actually probably the best solution for a car. I don't think it's a bad idea. They could come up with, but I don't Um, think it's going to take off anytime fast. Yeah. I was, I, so since they announced it last year, I was expecting there to be a few cars that came out with it by now, by now. Yeah. No, there, they talked about, we've got one model coming this late this year. Yeah. So my dad is looking for a new, you know, insertable, you know, stereo player thing for his car. Mm -hmm. And if we could get an Android Wear one, we totally would. That would be awesome. It would be fantastic. Like, I don't know if they have screen size requirements for, you know, implementing it. Oh, yeah. You know, it has to be five inches tall and seven inches wide or whatever. But uh, if, if they don't, then, you know, it could be any screen size as long as there's some screen maybe. And, you know, it could go on from there. I don't know. So that'd be kind of analogous to, you know, like the, the, the whole idea behind the Chromecast is you buy this tiny little thing, plug it into a dumb TV, and then it's a smart TV. Right. So you, if, with the Android Auto, if, if they actually did this, you know, you buy this dashboard thing, you just plug it into your stereo system, mm-hmm. and uh, then you've got a smart car. Basically, that's what I really want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if they're doing that, and it's a shame that they're not. But even if they do... The hardware they put in it will be awful. I guarantee it. It will be some Snapdragon 200 garbage joke. And it'll be like using a screen slathered in molasses with a hot dog as a pointer. I guarantee it. Now, wasn't wasn't the idea behind uh, Android Auto that it actually, like, the the hardware in the car isn't doing any of the calculations. It's just taking data that the phone feeds it and displaying it, right? It does look like it has some dedicated UI, though. Okay. I don't know that for sure. I don't know if anybody really knows that for sure, honestly. I haven't seen one in person. I don't think I'll ever see one in person because yeah. I think it's going to fail. Because a hot dog in molasses is bad. So, Google Now, definitely not Frogs! Failing. Yeah. They're, so, they had a lot of stuff to talk about in Google Now. But in a roundabout and, way... Yeah. So, the, the, the summary here Frogs. is they just want to grab more context from you more data about you whatever know, you're doing yeah wherever you are how how you are so uh, google now currently does a pretty good job of like figuring out s- your patterns based on location mm-hmm. and based you're on at work right now right your, yes uh yes i should be so it your google now probably told you that you know i was uh, at work when i commuted over um Though, oh, okay, okay. So sometimes it, it takes a while for it to figure out like my new commute par- pattern, yeah. Um, at which it isn't really a pattern right it now. It did tell me about General Hospital being on though. Is that a show? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, I don't, I don't know why. 
I've never it seen it before. Thinks that you like that show? I guess so. Anyway, yeah. um, so yeah, it does. It does a good job of physical um, context, and also uh, a lot of the context that they currently do are based on like emails that you've gotten. Mm-hmm. So if you have a shipment coming in, if you uh, have bought plane tickets, you know it'll uh, show you your boarding pass information and. and um... It asked me if I wanted to set up an event for this event we're doing right now. Yep. We t- talked about doing the show on in emails, and it asked me if I wanted to set up a calendar oh. tracking thing. So yeah. that was cool. Uh, fortunately, you already have a Google Calendar I event do. for it, mm-hmm. so you don't really need it. No. Anyway, so they so the the more context that they're trying to get is usually based on whatever app you are currently in. So the one of their examples was. Um, listening to some Skrillex on Spotify, mm-hmm. and then the users, you know, just said, okay, Google, what's his real name? And it knew, based on the fact that they were listening to Skrillex, that he was talking about Skrillex. Right. So it answered with Skrillex's real name, Sunny something or other. Yeah, so let's take a step back and think about how they actually did it. Do you think, as a developer, you have to pour in all this extra data... What? Did I say something? That w- My phone just responded to your voice for whatever reason. Weird. I didn't say the word, okay, Google. Why? <laughs> when you actually say it, it doesn't respond. So That's funny. So, so do the, do, as a developer, do you have to put in all this extra data somehow so that the, the system can figure it out? Or, alternatively, does it literally take a screenshot in the background and then go parse it? I really hope that that's not the case. I should hope not, but the, what if it is? There's got to no. There's got to be data. There's got to be APIs. So um, that means you're leaking all of this extra data about every single thing you're doing on your phone to Google. I'm okay with potentially. That. Yeah, I'm okay eh, with that. it's kind of weird though. So for me, it's it's kind of uh, you know I know that that's happening already because I right. use all Google services. Mm-hmm. You know I don't use Spotify. I use Google Music. Right. Right. Uh, I, you know, I don't use uh, WhatsApp. Mm-hmm. I use Hangouts. Mm-hmm. So I know that they already have access to all of the text that I right. have in the in the app. Um, uh, of, I yeah. would prefer if they had more access to Hangouts messages, personally, but clearly they don't. They don't even know that app exists. <laughs> yeah, they didn't hardly ever mention it. Uh, I think I saw its icon once in, like, a, a huge array of other icons for stuff that... These are apps we don't like. Okay. Yeah, that 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 list. I think it was actually, like, their list of stuff that is built with uh, Android Wear in mind. I think that was it. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, context. Lots. Context. Frogs. They also introduced... Uh, so, usually when you're trying to get to Google Now currently, what you do is you swipe up from the home button. And that'll uh, still work. And Yeah, of course. But if you if you want to do something in Google Now that has to do with... Your what, screen's yeah, content. Yeah, so the, the app that you're currently in, you tap and hold on the home button and it'll bring up like this little overlay that kind of covers the lower th- the so lower third of the screen and you can pull bring, it up a little bit it'll bring up the the like the the google now search bar on the top mm-hmm. and it'll also bring up a card on the bottom yep so that you can start doing something with it yep and so there uh example was one of her friends was talking to her about going and seeing a movie and I believe the movie was Tomorrowland. She yep. mentioned that several times, mm-hmm. how great of a movie that is. It's yep. got George Clooney in it. She's got to go see it. And it so it, it brought up information about Tomorrowland mm-hmm. in the Google Now card. Yeah. I don't know how, how useful that'll be for me. I'll have to see what apps implement it. Yeah. Like, let's say I had a tweet and I wanted to know, what what, would, what could it tell me about a tweet? Uh, if, if the tweet is about some breaking news, it could bring up other uh, stories about it. Kind of yeah, thing. you know what can do that too? Twitter. <laughs> True. Oh, I loved it how the so one of the things that Google now recently announced before Google I/O was that they were going to be putting tweets into on cards in Google now, and I saw that announcement via like Twitter's highlights things, whatever they whatever those are called. Uh, so every once in a while, the Twitter app will give me a notification that is like people just tweeted something recently, and here's what it was. Yeah, or yeah, yeah like like so and so astronaut had a, a popular tweet. He, you know, here take a look at it. It's got a pretty picture, and um, and so it'll show. Actually, I probably have one like available right now to look at. Yes, of course. So um, the notification has like two different um things that I might want to look at. So I'm, I'll click on the Marvel show one. 
and um it brings up like this kind of sideways scrolling list of like popular tweets that i can look at the twitter app this is in the twitter app yeah i don't use the twitter app yeah i know um so google io obviously is kind of actually heavily right now but anyway so so for the the google now talking about how they're going to have tweets in google now Mm -hmm. that popped up as a tweet in my highlights view on the twitter app so the fact that they're having tweets in now is that because they re- recently redid their deal with Twitter, so they could put search results for Twitter in the search results. Did they lose a deal with Twitter at so, some point? So like five years ago, before Google Plus came about, they used to have Twitter tweets in the Google search results. Okay. And then Google Plus popped up, and they got angry and uh, took the deal away. And hmm. now clearly nobody cares about Google Plus, and the deal's back. Yeah, that, yeah, that's prob- probably it. Probably related. Do, do, do. So speaking of how nobody cares about Google+, Plus, um, Google finally decided to kind of take their, their photos experience, which is a great, great, it's probably the best uh, photo backup service that there is. But it could have been better. Y- I mean... If it's you- good, but it could be better. Everything would be better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're they're taking that and removing it from, from the Google Plus part. The, yeah, from under the Google Plus banner, um, which is a really interesting turn of events because I'm like, so it used to be Picasa, and then they took that and changed it into Google Plus Photos, and at the same time made some pretty awesome changes to how it works and added a bunch of features and mm-hmm. everything, uh, and now they're bringing it back to just being uh, Google Photos. Got the and update. I'm, and I'm not sure if they actually would have made all of those cool features and, and additions to no, Picasa definitely if if it weren't for Google Plus. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm definitely okay with the way that things are turning out. Now, do you think because Vic left a year or so ago, mm-hmm. do you think that had a major impact on getting Google Photos back out of Google Plus? Right, probably. Yeah, yeah. I I hate that Vic had to leave. He was the greatest presenter that they ever had. And really he, enthusiastic and, about what he was working and, on. And, you know, he was a great guy. You know, he he was he loved photography, which mm-hmm. is ironic. Cause, uh, Still does. Yeah. But now he left, and here we are with an app that doesn't suck, potentially. Potentially. So I'm downloading it right now. We'll find out. Yeah. So so let's talk about what it does that's that's new. Um, so they, they talk about how they want this to be the one place for you to, for you to back up all of your photos. Um, they want it to help you organize your photos. They want it to oh that's pretty um and they they want to make it like easy to share from it and um and you know not but so basically like making it easy to share it, it already was within the Android app easy to share from it um to things that weren't Google plus but uh now it's now it's not going to be defaulting to google plus options for the sharing i believe yeah and i think that makes a lot of sense although that does sort of make it harder to share in a way kind of like like if i wanted to share something to my parents Uh i'd have to type in their email addresses presumably and it would just send them a link i guess right sure so i guess that's fine but i mean if you're on the phone i guess you can just send a link in any way you want Mm -hmm. you know to your third party chat app Mm -hmm. but it's sort of weird that it doesn't that google doesn't have a thing to share to if the, if Google Plus isn't the thing, well, what is the thing? Well, I think you can still share yeah. them to Google Plus, but it's weird. Um, it's just that it's that's not, not necessary. Forced. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I f- I forgot to mention. Yeah, the the stuff that you've backed up will still be like visible, obviously, on the web at mm-hmm. photos.google.com, and then you can send a link that a link to that right. photo to anybody. So it's it's kind of pulling a flicker a little bit now, which is good. Um, I think that move is yeah, yeah. expected and necessary. Yeah. Um, they also, so they talked about helping to organize your photos by like, um, taking, taking their lovely facial recognition software and grouping photos by like who's in them. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they, they also were talking about how they can intelligently figure out who the most important people are to you, you know, who's, whose pictures you're going to want to see the most. Pop in a lot. Um, and somehow, somehow they have these photos of like uh, these children that are related to the the people who are you know on the allegedly photos related. Yeah, and it's like yeah, I've got all these photos of of my niece who's like four years old, and we can go all the way back down to when she was born, and it like recognizes her face all the way up through. It's like, 
How? I don't even recognize that that's the same child. I mean, it really might only be possible because they have pictures, you know, every month Mm -hmm. for that entire duration. And otherwise, it would be impossible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, as I can tell you as a a real-life, you know, Google Plus Photos user, that it it can't even tell when it's me always <laughs> and my face hasn't changed very much no, since google you look plus exactly came out. the same yeah as long as as long as i shave every like week and a half I'll, i don't even shave I look exactly the same. decadently and i am even picked up right but you consistently don't shave so you, your beard always looks the same yes yeah they can pick me out of a crowd oddly enough it does a really good job at recognizing my mom's face i thought you were gonna say beards no okay that might have to do with the fact that my mom always makes the same cheesy smile whenever she's eh, in a photo. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so one of the one of the features that I really really liked, and this is like a really small thing, but um, you know when you're scrolling through like the all photos list, um, you know it, it on the phone it defaults to having like about two photos wide. Yeah. Right. So the big thumbnails. Yeah. That you can see easily. And then and then they showed how you can pinch to zoom out and you get, you know, more like you get three, four, five photos side by side. Mm -hmm. And then eventually you get out to this point where it's like here is here is a month Mm -hmm. and here's like the all of the photos that you took in that month. I wonder if it's really like delineated like that. Is it really delineated by month in real life? Or is that what just, they, they were just showing? No, I think so. Because that's weird. Because I don't normally think of pictures in months. I don't know. Um. Uh, yeah. I mean, the only other uh, measurement of time that I, I think would you make think, sense. Do you think it'll show that same thing for albums? Like, if you pick an album to look at, do you think it'll show you or let you do like that zoomed out view in the album? It might not show you multiple it albums that way. Might because I, I hope so. Because I would like that. Um, so the, yeah, the only other, like, measurement of time that I can think of that would make I sense is, uh... Weeks? Le- is seasons. Okay, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So I have it's these... the same as a month, I guess. Sort of, except that it's, like, three months. Yeah, but seasons are hard, because not all the places have all the seasons. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All the places have all the months, usually. Usually. Except Mars. Oh, look, Periscope has another update. Oh. Anywho. Um, any which way. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Google Photos... Coming back, people aren't going to hate it anymore because it, it it's not... I already hate it less. It, it doesn't have all of that baggage of, uh, you know, a social network that people irrationally don't like. And let me tell you what people love the most. Even if they don't know they don't love it the most right now, let me tell you. Unlimited photo storage. Oh, yeah, I almost For forgot. the backup. <sighs> I was getting scared that I was going to have to buy a $25 Moto G to cheat. <laughs> like it was gonna happen today or tomorrow i'm running out of space i am like five gigs away from hitting the limit so they they were paying attention specifically to your account to see when you would be running out of space like, and then they announced this i don't take that many pictures i take maybe three or four pictures a day unless i go like out on a specific event yeah, it's definitely more than average i'd say but it's not like unruly right. it's not an unreasonable like i amount. don't I, I take you know pictures of the cute dog because you know it's a dog mm-hmm. and uh you know when we go out to the garden show i'll take pictures of the garden show you know they're you know, fair number of pictures, but it's not like I'm taking massive photogra- photographer class pictures every single day. Yeah. So let, let's mention what the deal was before today. So, uh, f- 15, for, right? Yeah. 15 gigabytes of storage and unified for your, storage. Yeah. For your entire Google account. So emails, uh, Google Drive and photos. And, uh, when you're taking what what how many megapixels is the Nexus six? Uh, this um, is thirteen, I think. Thirteen megapixels. Yeah, let's yeah. go with that. Mine's uh, the Nexus five is eight megapixels, mm-hmm. um, and the you know 1080p videos those those tend to start to fill it up pretty fast. Like I I, I think your photos is definitely like by far pro- is probably like eighty percent of of your storage space that you're using oh, up or something like easily. that. Right? Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit different because I, when I got yeah, my you, Chromebook, you, you I jumped straight into that. Yeah, I, I stay out of it. Um, yeah, and so so most of my uh, storage space is taken up by stuff that I have in Google there's Drive. A, there's for whatever a way reason. to see what your Drive storage is like. Yeah, um, yeah. If you're in, if you're in Drive, there should be a little thing in the lower left hand corner. Um, so yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, so. I have 23 gigabytes of stuff stored in Drive. I have 5 gigabytes of stuff in Gmail. And I have 25 gigabytes of Google Plus Photos. So you're going to love this. 
<laughs> yeah. 17.5 gigs of photos. How you not run out yet? Because I, I got the... um. You know that oh, thing? Oh, the Quick Office that, or whatever. Yeah. The, yeah. What was, it, was it called Quick Office before I believe that? so. Okay. Yeah, I got that bonus. Oh, yeah, it says right there, Quick Office promotion. It expires any day now. Uh, two gigs in Gmail mm-hmm. and zero in Drive. Wow. Because I amazing. hate Drive. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess, wow, I, I didn't realize how many photos I had, but I guess I had What did you say for photos? 25 gigs. Wow. Yeah. And you um, only have a, a Nexus uh, Five. Just imagine if you had a Nexus Six. The yeah, the the difference though is that uh, I have I brought all of my old photos in and imported mm-hmm. them to Google Photo Google Plus Photos as well. Um, so those are there. Anyway, um, so the the new deal that they have uh, is that you have unlimited photo storage, photo and video for photos up to 16 megapixels and photo or videos up to 1080p. Um, that seems pretty reasonable. Yeah. Like, um, for example, I took a picture of this weird smoking uh, sewer. Oh, yes, yes. And this camera is 1080p, as you might know. Mm-hmm. And that video... It was uh, like 15 seconds long. It was long. about 12 to 15 seconds long. And... 290 megs. That's a lot. Of megs. I don't think that should count against me. Google mm-hmm. dared me to buy this phone, and I did. Hey, if I can Periscope for 2 hours and 23 <laughs> minutes and not have to worry about storage, it's still, you know, it's still there. Right. It's archived. Uh, yeah, why can't Google hand and, it? And I don't understand why they hadn't done this earlier. Now, but I do have a question for you, and I'm going to hand you my phone now, because as you know, I have installed the app, and I'm baffled by the screen. I just installed the app as well, so I can... What does this mean? Okay. What? Ooh. <laughs> Didn't need that phone. I've got more. <laughs> Welcome, Ryan. Upload size for photos and videos. High quality, free unlimited storage. Original. Huh. Because, for the for the record, 16 gigabytes, I mean 16 megapixels, is the threshold for free. Yep. And I'm at 13 megapixels, so why aren't I obviously free let's get help deciding so (laughs) that that option is probably there for people who have like you know the galaxy note whatever that has a 20 megapixel camera kind of thing you know that option there Um, is okay so you can choose between two storage sizes to back up your photos and videos on high quality is unlimited free storage regular cameras recommended for phones or point and shoot cameras that are 16 megapixels or less Use is good for typical printing and sharing size save high quality photos and videos while reducing size so original limited free storage uses your google accounts 15 gigs dslr cameras recommended if you take photos with a dslr camera and want to ma- maintain the exact original quality okay uses recommended so i think you can probably safely hit that original button are you sure um why would they write it that way if that was what they meant because that's so it used to be that you had the option of doing the like low quality, yeah. uh, four thousand by three thousand or whatever it was, so you that's know, low um, uh, pixels, yeah. uh, versus having the original mm-hmm. resolution. Um, but now that the like that the know, regular like weird one way to write it is lower than your camera. Why wouldn't it know? Okay, they made the phone. They should know. Come on, Google. Hmm. Yeah, because this only applies to. I is that setting synchronized between multiple Android devices? They still made all the phones I own, and they, there's no way there isn't an API to ask the phone what your resolution is. Is the, so? Uh, there's no DSLR that is going to take advantage of automatic uploading, right? There could be right? like the Samsung Galaxy camera, but maybe two cameras in the world. I'm just gonna put yeah, you on the original yeah, and matter. see what happens. If I use more space, I'll just. Oh buy look, one. they're showing they're showing the oh, pitch to Zoom. Oh, that's so cute. I'll give you back your okay, phone. Okay, that's fine. Oh, and it changes color from blue. Yeah, it goes through all the Google colors. Oh, hey. Yeah. I can't wait to open up that app. Anyway, before I do that, let's talk about some Internet of Things. The best, the oh. best, uh, well, phrase ever. You know. <laughs> uh, so we begin here with the project Brillo. Brillo. We don't know what Brillo is a reference to. It could be a cleaning product. It could Probably be a Brillo not. pad. I don't know what they're going for here. Usually, there's a joke be- behind the name, like yeah, felt. I, I think he, he smooth. He talked about like it's Volta. It's Brillo because it's like the low, lower, you know, kernel level of Android, Android that's but I don't, running this. But what is a Brillo? I don't know. Yeah, so I don't get the joke. Uh, so a- a- as you mentioned, it is the lower level of Android. So mm-hmm. basically everything except the UI. Yep. 
So the good parts, basically. Sure. And um, apparently it's what they like to call end to end, except the part that is completely in the point to be interoperable with everything else if it wants to be. Yeah. And that's called weave. Yeah, I was really kind of kind of confused about this whole this whole section of the talk um, because yeah, it sounds like they're trying to make a whole system that other people can plug into if can, they need can to, hook into or want yeah. To. Um, but but like it sounds like Google is going to be not really like in control control of these mm-hmm. things, but like will be able to direct how developers so for an example into the system so so let's say you had your your um internet enabled shoes sure and very so, important so i can find them exactly again. and those shoes implement project brillo which is the part of android that is just kernel stuff mm-hmm. you know it's an operating system without a ui you know it's like a server but a server that's in something yeah and so that it has no ui but it can, can talk with other devices out on the network well how do those devices on the network talk to the thing with the, the the brillo well it talks with the weave yes <laughs> and so that's a standardized cross-platform schema basically and it looks very much like json because it is probably is and uh so there's the deal so even though it's end-to-end everything they use to end-to-end communicate with things it's all implemented in weave anyway yes yeah so yeah. Th- they implemented something to be end-to-end but open-ish enough to mm-hmm. work yeah, we'll see. And there was uh, there was one image that uh, that you kind of were like, "That's so unfortunate." Where they they had uh, you know an image of this this supposed Internet of Things, and the phone was at the center of the thing that was connecting everything else. Um, like I get it; it makes yeah. sense that your phone, the thing that you always have with you, is your most immediate conduit to all your other things. Yeah, it's the portal. But it's also unfortunate that the center of your localized internet of things isn't physically the most powerful device you have yeah and clearly in their little matrix of devices you know there were five things there was like there was the tv there was your tablet there was your phone there was maybe your car i don't remember uh your computer was definitely there um, but it was it was a like a laptop it wasn't a desktop yeah and that's what i'm really focusing on desktop isn't something they even thought of putting there Clear, clearly they're not attractive clearly nobody uses desktops the right way yeah for things, even to, even even in the developer world, people ignore them. Why? For some reason, I don't know. They're doing it mm-hmm. wrong. Yeah. So Brillo will be previewing in Q3. So we're talking about it today because Android and uh, Weave will be available in Q4, and we're talking about it today because Brillo. Yes. Yeah. So we'll see these projects never take off. Cool. Android One. So this was another project that they announced last year, and it, and... And it was met with critical acclaim. Like mm-hmm. it, it worked really well. Those phones get Android updates before even Nexus phones, and it makes perfect sense because, like as they said, all of like eighty percent of uh, the the new devices that are being shipped uh, of the total you know mm-hmm. volume of devices that are being shipped are Android devices yep. in the world. And they started off the keynote actually by showing kind of this cool visualization of different types of Android devices. So like, you know, the blue ones, I believe, were the really high-end yep. ones. And then you kind of like went down to the to the reds that are, you know, um, more low-end ones. And uh, then they showed a map of the world with all of these dots to, you know, to indicate where different types of, of devices are being sold. Um, I'm a blue one. So, yeah. So, Android 1 is a very, very important, like, project for mm-hmm. them. Um, and they talked a bit more about it today, but, but I don't think... they didn't really say anything really about didn't. it. They really um, didn't. Well, and really, what can they say? They can't really force their partners in those countries or, you know, elsewhere in the world, mm-hmm. not America, to... Um, to, to implement certain hardware because that's kind of the point. Like you can use low end hardware, you have fun with that, but we'll may take we'll maintain the operating system and update it for you. Yeah. And really, what else can they say about it? They brought up like dual SIM cards again, but that's all been said before. Yeah, even um, the new the new uh, Zenfone two in America, which is a mid range phone, mm-hmm. has two SIMs. So uh, we did mention during that part of the you know keynote that it felt really depressing, really really somber and really gloomy. And it feels like once you start talking about India, which is terrible to say, but it's like, well, great. Now now it just doesn't apply to us, and it's just sad and depressing. Let's just tune out. 
because they're done uh, by that time in the keynote. They're they're done talking, talking about all the about, cool stuff. Yeah, the new but features that it's are weird user. that they don't frame it in a different way. There's no reason people in the United States wouldn't also be able to enjoy offline maps, which is something they talked about. Yep. Offline YouTube viewing, which is something tons of people would love. Mm-hmm. Why can't? And, and I already sort of have access to that on particular. Uh, uh, music video right. type things. Why? Why tons of people wouldn't also be able to enjoy two G or three G or even four G reduced page load times? Mm-hmm. Why? Who wouldn't love Chrome to have less memory usage for your browsing experience? There's no reason they couldn't frame these things to be worldwide instead of just eh, third world. Go. On. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I do enjoy the fact that our our one note for this section is question mark question mark question mark India question mark question mark question mark yeah i don't i don't know i tuned out and i am um, still better yeah mm-hmm. so let's talk about some developer crap sure that's literally the name of this that's, section yes um that um, unfortunately they didn't present it that way on yeah stage. you know it felt a little bit disjointed when sundar came out and we said we have android and we have chrome i thought they were going to break up the presentation into those two silos you know we're going to talk about consumer for for android and consumer or developer for android and then we're going to talk about consumer for chrome and consumer for or developer for uh, chrome man that was messed up yeah but they didn't even talk you about, can't keep them straight <laughs> you know, who knows what the platforms are anymore but they didn't it was just all over the place so for developer we have cloud testing yes and this is on the android side and this sounds like it's a good deal because as a developer you can get 20 of the top world devi- worldwide Android devices to test on mm-hmm. in the cloud. So when you upload your app and you or update your app, you can just have it run on all of them. And if it works, great. And if it returns errors, you'll find out. Yep. And you also apparently can get like screenshots and video recordings of your app's performance somehow. I don't know if you get to like interact with your app on the devices like through some cloud remote thing some some sort of interface but i wouldn't be surprised if there was like some limited scripting like you can emulate finger touches or emulate keyboard Mm -hmm. presses i'm sure they have things yeah i'm sure when when you upload an app and you you can i i'm sure that you can upload some sort of test thing yeah not not a test suite but like a a a a set of tests to do on the app to make sure that it's working and and they did say it was free although i wonder Mm -hmm. what the limitations are on that and if there's like a paid tier because some developers might want to have more testing on Mm -hmm. these 20 top 20 worldwide devices they also didn't mention if this is actually running on those devices like on the hardware or if this is emulated in some sort i i don't feel like they're emulated because they would have said we're emulating the top 20 worldwide devices mm-hmm. they would have made a bigger deal about their ability to emulate all this instead of actually having physical devices i don't know i feel like if i were trying to actually test these things i would want to know that like i, I would want google to do it on the actual hardware i think that's what they're going um, to do and and so if they were going to emulate it they might downplay that mm, i don't know if they would be this, that like dishonest it. yeah I don't know. google mad they can't be evil don't be evil anyway yeah. Um, they talked about Polymer 1.0 is coming out. So last year we got the, so do you remember quantum paper? That's what we called material design beforehand. And a lot of the things we saw was material design on Android and material design on websites. It was kind of the precursor to what became Inbox. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's the same material design, but on the web. And that's a lot of what Polymer is. It's also, you know, kind of like a model view controller kind of thing, web component kind of thing for the web so you know it's a it's a paradigm it's a thing you code in uh-huh and um it was kind of in beta last year and now it's not in beta now it's officially at 1.0 which is great nobody will use it still um yeah except for a few like enthusiasts who really want to hello brian mitchell <laughs> yeah some some of my uh yeah classmates from uh from my time in sweden um, you know, when they made their website for mm-hmm. the di- design of dynamic web systems, they built in a lot of material design stuff into their right. into their web app. Yep. Um, actually, a lot of um, obviously first party Google oh, yeah. um, services on the web are getting material design updates. And like, uh, it's not clear how separate these things are. So Polymer is defaulting to the skin of material design. Mm-hmm. But Polymer, Polymer isn't just the design. It's also a methodology of coding these right. components. So it's kind of a confusing thing. If you look at uh, Inbox, for example, what is an actual component thing and what is just code? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I would like to make a shout-out, actually, to oh, the, uh, the 
Google Music, um, um, you know, WebView mm-hmm. version of it because they just updated that and it is, it is so gorgeous. That's good. I love it. It, it looks awesome on gigantic screens. I'll show, I'll show it to you after the. I have a TV. Show. Yeah. Chromecast right up there. Well, no, I, you need to see the actual, like, full, uh, desktop version of oh, the okay. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, web development can send. Wow, what a sentence. So web developers can opt into this new updated service. So what was it called? Uh, cloud messaging, right? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. So cloud messaging three. Uh, I don't know. This used to have a different name at previous convention keynote deals, but I guess they've renamed it again. I don't know. So as 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 a, as a website, you can actually send these OS level notifications now. Which is really, really cool. Which is pretty cool. And it's potentially possible that the Google I.O. website was the first to implement it. It, it, might, it might be. Yeah. Because they had a little checkbox available for, uh, you know, do you want to get, get notifications th- when your presentation starts? Yep. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. So they've they've had notifications from websites for a while, but usually they would uh, require something like an extension or whatever, mm-hmm. you know? So like when Gmail first started trying yep, to give you notifications that. about uh, new new emails, that was necessary. So now I, I don't have any of those extensions anymore. And I don't think, well, I guess Gmail can do the little pop-up things in the corner, mm-hmm. which is notification support. But this is yeah. push notifications. That's what this particular thing is talking about. Ah, so you don't even have to have the website potentially not, but open. I feel like you might still. But you can push notification by having a socket open, just like normal. I don't know. Mm-hmm. We'd have to read the developer details. But the way I do it now is through Push Bullet anyway. So it pings my phone. Right. And push Bullet's over to my computer anyway. Yep. So you know why didn't Google just buy Push Bullet? And that yeah mm. that that works obviously in Chrome because Chrome has a uh, well no no it it has a notification yeah. center right. built into it like since I'm on Windows Seven Windows mm-hmm. Seven obviously doesn't have a notification um, system for for Google to push to no because when Windows Seven was made nobody thought the internet would survive right yep two thousand nine gloomy place okay. I, so, I do remember that Windows 7 party that we had, though. That was the yeah, best thing ever. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> we can have a Windows 10 party. Woohoo! Hopefully this summer. Hopefully I'll get back by then. Hopefully. Yeah. Or you can Skype in, in the river. Sounds like a bad idea. We're just going to have an iPhone 4 with us. That's it? Yeah, I'm not bringing my Nexus 5 on the river. Good choice. I'm actually, here's why, the why don't you actually just do that though? Why don't you just buy like a cheap garbage phone, like a prepaid phone? You already have a cheap garbage phone. Yeah, but for you, just in case you get separated and you're oh, floating know, down know, the river and whatever. you're dead. Okay, um, you'll just swim across. No, I so, get it. so here's what my plan is for my Nexus 5 during that time. Um, you know how Google, uh, had that deal where you can send in your Nexus 5 oh, once with, yeah. with no questions asked. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be gone for a while, yeah, so sense. I won't need a phone. I'll yeah, send it in during that time. Well, so you should take your SIM out and yep. just put it in a you know cheap prepaid phone. Oh. You know, just just a flip phone. And just put it in, mm-hmm. and uh, then you can take it with you. And have my 100 minutes. Yeah, and just in case you need it. Wait, nobody's going to know my number. It'll be the same number. No. Oh, because you're dumb. Okay, I get no, it. No, because I'm smart. No, it's dumb. <laughs> Okay, as we were. Um, I don't know what this is about. You tell me. Uh, we're uh, testing different store <laughs> entries. Oh, right, right. So this was actually a really cool thing. Um, they were talking about um, a few new features that they have in the Android Play Store for apps, right? Right. So um, the first thing that they talked about was you can now test different store entries to see which drive more downloads. Right. So you can uh, release your your app into the Play Store and put several different icons on it. Mm-hmm. And you can put several different descriptions. Um, app descriptions. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. And, and whichever ones of those like combinations uh, drives the most downloads, you can then choose that one as your actual right. app icon. So it's, and it's, stuff. it's fancy A-B testing, basically. It's yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, and it's interesting that they decided to do this over other things. Like, for example, literally making a nice, nice list of, uh, in-app purchases or something. Mm-hmm. Force all the developers with in-app purchases to have a list. Why not do that? What does it mean when I have in-app purchases from a dollar to $99? Yeah. I, yeah. What does that mean? Cause it's <laughs> insane. Um, so the other thing that, that they announced that's really, really cool is having a Play Store profile for developers. Mm-hmm. Because so often when you're, when you're looking at an app and you want to know, like, you, who even made this? You who know? made Messenger? Hmm. Was it Facebook? Oh, I'm not downloading that. <laughs> your, your only option quite often is to, like, 
search for them on Google mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, hopefully find a nice Their website, website for them that will describe who they are. Right. Um, but, you know, now now they have, uh, you know, a you profile know, system. You know, it, it's not, I don't think they talked about it, but you can see the evolution of this too. So maybe you can review apps, but maybe you'll be able to eventually maybe write reviews for the actual account the oh. author you know like oh yeah this guy makes great apps just go get him oh yeah you know he has bad support don't talk to him anymore okay you know maybe that's possible it could be trolled a lot but it is some evolution they could bring it forward mm-hmm. into that and as i as i mentioned uh during the the presentation it's probably a good thing that it is only happening now mm-hmm. because if they had done this like two or three years ago they would have been forced to have google plus profiles oh gosh of, can you imagine uh, that yeah. Now, one thing I didn't see because I don't think he scrolled down far enough, but I hope it also links. It also can link back to their website. Yeah, because it is. It would be a shame if you know it only talked about them in four lines of text and that was it. That would be bad. Yeah, mm-hmm. it would make any sense. Right. So we also have the family star, and this is a new search thing you can use to filter your Google Play results. For family-friendly apps. Mm -hmm. It's a green star that'll hover over your little apps, just like, you know, it's like noted feature developer, noteworthy Mm -hmm. developer. Is it the kind of thing that's going to show up in that little list of, like, you know, um, categories for the app? Like, this is a card game, it's listed under your productivity, it's listed under... So I think when you do just a regular play search, it will be an option you can check, but I think it might actually be eventually a category also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I think what's interesting about this is they like it's it's separating it even from like kids apps to just family friendly apps Mm -hmm. so like the uh apple app store they have a really strict guidelines for what's considered like g and pg and you know Mm -hmm. stuff and so uh, for some period of time browsers were considered unsafe like not family friendly because you can do whatever you want with a browser yep you know, you, you accidentally type something in. Periscope would be dangerous. Oh man, man I mean, it would just be blocked up and down. But you know, it's been relaxed and made more sensible. So it's interesting that they didn't like just do some weird thing here. Also, mm-hmm. I also wonder if this has a lot to do with um, the EU's mandatory um, Peggy um, playification thing. Yeah, so they they did show that a little bit in conjunction with the the game ratings that uh, were introduced to the Google Play Store uh, like a month or two ago, mm-hmm. I think, because um, they they showed uh, yeah. a game that had a green family star mm-hmm. and was also it also had its um, ESRB rating of everyone ten and up. Right. So I think this might have something to do with that. Clearly, it's a good idea. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and yeah, the reason that they can't just rely on like the ESRB and Peggy ratings is because that's only for games. Right. Exactly. There's all sorts of apps that are yeah. That so so what apps that should totally be family friendly but clearly aren't for some strange loophole reason? It's Twitter. I have no. So idea any app me. with user generated content, basically. Yep. Facebook, yep. Instagram. So so great. So every app that anybody wants. YouTube. Nothing. YouTube. Oh would man. Be the worst. Oh. Oh, wait, that's the system app. Uh, oh, I got to uninstall Android now. <laughs> or at least the Play Services. So let's talk about the future. Cardboard? Oh, I think <laughs> I was the bored future? There. Yeah, I think that might be the past and the present and the future. So they they announced a new uh, design for Cardboard, the, the, the headset. The, the thing that you build to put your phone in. Yeah. Um, the new version uh, accommodates phones six inch up phones, to six inches somebody designed a nexus yeah who did that google uh, <laughs> so they it's funny that he said like oh yeah phones have gotten quite a bit bigger in the last year like oh the galaxy note series didn't exist before that <laughs> what's that anyway um so they talked about how it's it's easier to build it, it three only, steps it, yeah, instead three of steps. ten mm-hmm. um <laughs> better stuff better stuff there's a new button sure <laughs> Oh yeah, because the the old the button that they had before only worked with some phones. And I don't. So he said something about a magnet, but I didn't know what I, that meant. I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know. Um, now the cool thing that they that they uh, announced was um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip expeditions for now because the thing that I really want to talk about is jump. Right. So they they have made this like kind of um, big metal frame that you can mount uh, a bunch like what was this like sixteen no. That's too many. A, a bunch of cameras in it. Um, yeah, I, don't, I you, know. I felt like sixteen was the answer. Was it a sixteen? Okay, yeah. like sixteen cameras in a circle, eight on each side. Um, and they, you know, so it's 
capturing a full 360 degree panorama with each, you know, with each frame of, of the cameras. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they, they, along with this, obviously, are releasing some software that can take the images from all of these and automatically, you know, synchronize the time and take them and stitch them together into a panorama. And for, do all those each... optimizations. Yep. Um, cause yeah, lighting and, and whatnot has and to be 3d spatial recognition. Yeah. Yeah. It, you, it can use the images from, from like the three or four cameras that, uh, can view a certain point to figure out what depth it's at and, uh, and what to do. Yeah. Stitch things together more, more better based on the uh, depth perception information more better. Um, and, uh, so in order to see this stuff, well, um, you know, you're going to have to have uh, a, a like cardboard thing, um, so a cardboard headset, and you're also going to need to get the video file to yourself. So, how is Google going to possibly get video files to us? They don't have like a distribution platform for video. Oh, YouTube! Oh. Yeah, so YouTube is going to support jump videos. Um, and what a dumb name! I don't. Don't I don't remember if they talked about it uh you like people being able to watch jump videos if they don't have they a didn't mention cardboard headset. Um but I think that it would be really cool. Just change your user agent to the work. What? No, sure. don't, don't worry. Um so I think that it would be really really cool if you could watch um you know a, th- a 360 degree video on desktop and just kind of click and drag left to right. Just to... like in the photosphere. Yeah, exactly. The mm-hmm. photosphere or, or like looking at a panorama in uh, in Google Plus Photos. Yeah. Go- oh, I'm sorry. Google Photos. Uh, um, yeah. So the the world is, is uh, in the future. a cool place. We're in the future. And so Expeditions is a good use for your jump photography because mm-hmm. it is a thing for teachers, apparently, to give to their students to tour the Great Wall of China and other great landmarks in the world that students apparently just will not understand by reading a book. Yeah, so the the idea is that uh, you have all of these cardboard headsets for all of the kids in the in the classroom and the teacher, you know, has a tablet up at the front and they're like, okay, kids, put your uh, headsets on and we're going to go to the Wall of China. And then she hits a button and there um, you are. And every single one of the kids gets, you know, <laughs> Motion load, sickness. loaded up into the same uh, environment and they're all looking around. You know, it's cool. But again, does it, is it necessary? Does it serve any purpose? What's the point? Mm, well, it, it definitely is good to. But is it good enough? For the cost that it must cost. Probably not yet. Yeah. Someday when virtual reality headsets are a dime a dozen, you know, and we all have them, it'll it'll be like, well, like yeah, of course Like phones aren't even that them. way now. No, not yet. Yeah, so, like, when is this happening? Like, the cardboard uh, Go headset itself... Go into this industry and fix it. <laughs> the cardboard uh, headset itself costs, like, nothing, right? Right, but, but the phone you have to put into it. Each kids has to have a phone. And, you know, they're all six inches. Not the kids, the the, uh, the phone. <laughs> They're not that small. They're, they're, they're I was going to say they're adult kids. They're, they're, they're actual kids. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think any school is going to waste all that money unless Google gives it to them for it, free. It was a little strange touting this as an education thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it would have just made more sense to be like, yeah, Expeditions is the uh, online marketplace where you can look for other people's like why, footage why, why or whatever. Why even call it a marketplace? Oh, wait, no, wait, that's It's the YouTube, YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. Like Jump Expeditions. Mm-hmm. Wow, that makes way more sense, huh? Yeah, it's it's not like uh, it's not like Expeditions is going to suddenly show up in classrooms in SPPS the way that uh, iPads have. No. Mm-hmm. Oh well. Yeah. So, uh, with all of that said, that is pretty much the bulk of the Google I/O from the keynote. Now, there could be great things coming out in the um, you know little developer sessions thereafter. Yeah. For example, we just got wind of the Chromecast updates. They're going to have oh, really? better APIs for doing um, split view screens. So you can have your Chromecasted thing up on the screen and you'll actually be able to have controls on the phone or tablet or whatever, mm-hmm. actually be able to control it in more of a real time way. You know, instead of just having pause and play, you will actually have more controls. That's good. So um, more APIs will come to light, you know, throughout the next period of time and, you know, stuff. Um, so, you know, it's not like this is all of Google I.O., no. This is just two and a half boring hours of I.O. And if there's anything like really, really important that there they be. announce later on for some reason. We'll talk we'll about prob- it on the podcast. Well, 
the I mean, new oh, premiere show of the network. I don't see why you couldn't just like record a quick little thing. Uh, you like, think I'm going to go to Hi, all this that is Ryan. Work. Two days later, they uh, suddenly announced that they discovered alien life and uh, Cause Skrillex. Yeah, cause, <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. But, Probably not. Uh, we can always talk about it again later. You know, so so based on this year's I/O, last year's I/O, and the I/O before that, how was it? Oh goodness! What happened at the I/O before last year? I don't know. I remember like last year's I/O was uh, surprisingly important because they had Cause, a cause lot material. of things that yeah that that they announced. Um, and but and if, Android coming to new platforms like Auto and was it important wearables, though? Because clearly they still didn't happen yet. And they re- well the wearables happened. Yeah, but seven there were only devices. seven of them. Um, I can. I mean, I can. I can't fault them for not. I can. Uh, having auto things come out because it takes like uh, car design is a long process. Again, and if they just made something with an embeddable screen, it would be done in forty minutes. Yeah, they know how to do it. They just refuse. They want to have this weird deep integration with car OEMs. There's no reason. Agreed. Agreed. I can't believe that I had never heard anybody, uh, you know, mention that that idea before of, of i mean if you can put in a, a stereo you can put in a screen mm-hmm. with a stereo on behind the screen mm-hmm. there's no reason yeah i don't understand also does it really replace the stereo like is it fully integrated what it it the what? android auto yeah so does that mean it controls your radio yeah do you get a radio in your car if you have android audio probably if they I can put so. if they can put FM radios in a Moto G, they can probably put FM radios in an on Android Auto. Okay, system. good. Just making sure, you know, it's yeah. got, got to have it. But they're I think they're uh, assuming that people who are buying cars with Android Auto are going to be the kinds of people who want to use their phone in their yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for but like everything. There aren't enough cars with either Apple Auto or I don't even know what their version is called at this point. Wasn't it uh, CarPlay or something yeah, CarPlay. like that? Yeah, CarPlay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an awful name. Yeah, it is. But it's just like Google Play. R- yeah. What? Same awful name. Different store. Sure. And uh, I thought it was supposed to be like an AirPlay kind of. I think that, um, isn't it? Pl- yeah. It's wireless. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. Like, the, all, all of these solutions are half-baked because they didn't want to do it the right way. Mm-hmm. Car OEMs wanted too much control. Man, sounds kind of like uh, those those mobile network uh, providers oh, them. back in the day. You know, they didn't talk anything about you know any extra stuff about Project Fi or Fee. Oh or yeah, that's right. Whatever you call it, they didn't talk about like if they had any uh, Android specific plans for carrier aggregation. You know, doing the merge of you know the data networks. Oh. You know, like, anything in the system that would help it do it. Okay. Like, not just device-specific firmware, mm-hmm. but actually Android-wide firmware to do some of that, you know, pick a signal, do a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's kind of too bad. Um, there might be APIs somewhere, but who knows about them? Not I. Yeah. So, was it good? Did you like it? Um, No. I, I could have stayed home and just, you know, read some recaps of what yeah. was announced. Uh-huh. I would have been fine with that. Yeah, I know. See, that's that's what's happening to all of the major presentations. That none of them have that pizzazz anymore. Not anymore. We're we're too old for this. Mm. Mm-hmm. We're not excited. So anymore. old and jaded. Oh, that <laughs> Sam Sam had a pretty funny uh line that he that he sent you um that saying that uh, the the people in the audience at this keynote uh seemed to be having a competition to to see who could be the most jaded and uh unenthusiastic about the announcements. <laughs> and it and really we saw a bunch of people looking like yeah, kind of puzzled, kind of frowny, kind of like, oh, I have to clap now. Uh, <laughs> just and, and you know, I kind of, I don't necessarily blame them because what it was like nine there. Oh yeah, it was yeah. You know, it's it, morning. It's supposed it's to tired. start at nine thirty, I think. And they probably had to get a line at like at least seven. Yeah. To get in there, you know, it but is... they had those wristbands this year, so oh, people actually so got they could in get it time. at eight thirty. Ooh. <laughs> You know, I I understand that you might not be super enthusiastic after you've just flown 2,000 miles and it's early. There also weren't any moments this year where I, sitting at home, would, like, you know, jumped out of my seat going, yes, this is what I've always wanted. Yeah, because there's nothing you wanted. Well, no, but last year there were a few moments like that. What? Uh, What could you possibly want? Android Wear? (laughs) At the time, it was like, this is exactly the thing. Yeah, Mr. Google. Yay. Yeah, I know. I used Uh, to be like that. So, 
Thank you for listening, everybody. I think that's all. Yeah, that's all. all. Where where can we find you on the internet? Uh, So I'm Ian Buck. You can uh, find me on Google Plus. I post a lot there. I'm on Twitter at uh, Ian R Buck. I do Periscope stuff every once in a while. Yeah, Periscope. It's a new thing. (laughs) It's a new thing. Yeah, it's gonna be funny listening to this in a year when Periscope dies off. Yeah, for some reason. It's like, well, huh? Well, maybe something better will come along. Meerkat. I, I have a few, uh, I have a few complaints about Periscope, but that's we'll for a, that's that for later. a different, yeah. And episode. of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter, Ryan Amar, and of course on the Google Plus, which is where I post pictures that no longer count towards my quota. There you go. Yeah. Oh, it's great. And there was much rejoicing. Actually, that was the one moment during the show where yeah. I, where we set up and we were like, like this is it. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. Well, it's been good. Have a good one. You too.